Very good morning to you and thanks for joining us on the run-up. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. I also have Bayo Loake here with me. Bayo, good morning and welcome to the program. Good morning, Nyamgul, and good morning to us. Always a pleasure being here. This time around, if you hear someone's voice, uh, it is uh, very, very gladdening because uh, you know that that person has woken up. There's poverty in the land, as it were. There is hardship in the land because of a lot of factors. And I think it's time to just be checking on our loved ones to know how they are faring, even though you may not be able to do anything from afar. I don't know how the situation of the um, scarcity of Naira nodes is in the area you are, Bio. It's a nationwide problem. I mean, it's, um, it's a nationwide problem and uh, people are complaining everywhere. I think there's probably a disconnect between the central bank and the commercial banks because the CBN apparently issued a directive requesting commercial banks to start paying out the new Naira notes across the counter. Mm. But you would find queues the queues are still long, uh, in many cases on moving, they're stationary queues, they have to move, uh, which signposts the, or rather gives the impression that not much is happening by way of the money being dispensed. Mm. And so the queues are static and people are frustrated. Um, I frankly, I cannot put a finger on exactly what is going on. Mm. Uh, the, the major issue is, even if we're doing a cashless policy, you find out that even when you try to do transfers, it's very, very difficult. Sometimes it doesn't go through. Sometimes you'll be debited, but it doesn't get to the destination. And the reversal, it's taking a long time. Sometimes you go to the ATM, and for every 1,000 Naira node you're being charged, and then you're paid only 3,000 Naira. And you're expected to go into the market to buy things in an economy whose inflation has gone more than 20 percent and it's a very very dangerous thing because like they say an, a hungry man is an angry man now there was this case uh, that just happened was it today or yesterday where uh, army men went to uniben and they were beating up everybody and that was because the first day uh, the previous day they had gone to the atm according to the stories uh, while everybody was on queue to withdraw the little money that they could withdraw, the men in uniform went and intimidated everyone, drove everyone away, went and withdrew the money that was available. And they went back the next day, and the students also said, okay, if this is what you're going to be doing, we cannot be hungry while you'll be collecting the money. And the fight started. Now the soldiers have gone back there as a reprisal and all that. So the point I'm trying to make here is that for as long as people are hungry, a lot of caution is thrown to the wind and it becomes more and more dangerous. Why I asked you in the first time what it was like in your area is that in some places, POS are charging an amount that you'll think they are just short of just holding guns because it's so outrageous and they are giving you all sorts of explanations and all that. In some other places, they are still having a human face, at least. So that's why I was asking whether it is so terrible in your area or it's the same as in some other areas that are a little bit fine. Well, I, I mean, the situation is basically the same. I think that for the um, uh, very slow, I mean, I experienced that myself yesterday. I bought, I bought something. Uh, the transaction didn't go through. Uh, I ended up having to pay cash. Now I wasn't. I didn't want to pay cash because I have very small amount of the of the new notes, and I didn't want to spend. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't want to spend them where if I have the option of doing a transfer. Mm. Uh, and also because if you spend them, you get old notes back as uh, as mm. change, and That's you're true. trying to get rid of the old notes. So it's a catch twenty two situation, you know. But I think the uh, the um, the transaction process is extremely slow uh, on the on the POSs because the there's so there's so many people on the system. Mm. You know, everybody is on the system trying to make uh, trying to make things uh, uh, work for them. So uh, it slows down. This is what I suspect, right? 
Uh, now, for the um, uh, and, and then they have to do something about this. I mean, the other day we were talking about the bandwidth, you know, the internet bandwidth. Yes. When everybody started working from home because of COVID, in the first few weeks when the whole world switched to online, we had problems. The system was very slow mm. because it was not configured for having so many people at the same time. But in a matter of weeks, you know, it, it was resolved. You could go on Zoom, you could go on Skype, you could go on anything, and it was normal speed, even if there were so many people. So my expectation was that perhaps a similar approach ought to have been taken when the CBN knew that this process was going to be launched, to have involved all the companies providing uh, access, yeah. access, you know, research, uh, whatever it is, uh, which the banks basically use, to ensure that there's an increase in the bank. Apparently, that is not happening. With regard to the soldiers who went to University of Benin, in my personal opinion, there's, I don't see any reason for soldiers to have come there. First of all, I believe that most of the military banks have ATMs. There are banks, there are ATMs in, in, in the banks. So for soldiers to go out of the banks and go into a university camp, Although this is what we saw online, but I want to believe there's an element of truth to it. I don't think it was fabricated, but of course it should be investigated. And therefore, for them to have engaged in, no matter the level of provocation, they had no right to have uh, engaged uh, in the act, you know, uh, that, that they, 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 they are being alleged, you know, to have been engaged in. And um, it speaks also to the level of discipline from the barracks from where they came. The commanding officer of that barracks, from where those soldiers came, has to explain why his soldiers left the barracks and whether they were authorized to go out of the barracks at that time. You know, because discipline has to be said, taken seriously. Because what has happened now is that they are giving the army a very bad image. Okay, by their conduct or by their alleged conduct, they are giving the military a very bad name. Mm -hmm. So the commanding officer of that barracks ought to take measures. He has to find out why those soldiers left that barracks at that time. And for the students of the University of Benin who are allegedly beaten, they have a right to complain to the police and they have a right to complain to the provost marshal of the Nigerian army. They, they probably know where those soldiers came from. So, and, and what usually happens is that people don't take action and people just complain. But if people know the right quarters and, and take the necessary action, I am sure this will not repeat itself. So the authorities or the students have a right to complain to the commanding officer of that barracks and to the provost marshal of the Nigerian army. Yeah, well, but like I said, a hungry man is an angry man. Um, the soldiers should never have cause to be hungry because there are no uh, Naira notes to use. And the students also should not have any cause to be ha uh, hungry because they don't have money to spend. I've seen people who have been stranded in places. I've seen people who are otherwise rich men uh, becoming almost like beggars. I've seen stories, some of them online, you may not uh, believe them, but the ones I have seen, I've seen people really, really suffering. Whatever has to be done by the, by the Central Bank of Nigeria should be done and should be done very fast because the more it stays, the more it lingers, the angrier people get. It's, this is not about election or anything, but it's just about the welfare of the people. We did so not, yes, we didn't, we didn't plan for this. We didn't envisage this. But on the other hand, I know that the policy is good. In fact, it's not so a new policy. This, this should have been happening every five years or ten years, as, as the case may be. But now it has happened after so many years. So we are trying to adjust. But whatever has to be done should be done now. And before now, Bayo, I was talking with uh, a security expert um, about another grievance, another anger that the people may be feeling now because there are online stories, like you said, that we cannot believe all of them, uh, about uh, bandits, supposed bandits, alleged bandits, brandishing new Naira notes and claiming that they have up to 10 million. And the security expert just laughed and said, these people are people who want to incite the citizens against the government 
and they like to do what they call war propaganda. So nobody should ever take them seriously because, I mean, how do they get this money? So I, I tend to uh, tilt to his side as well and to also talk to Nigerians that the fact that you're seeing it online does not mean it is true. It, if, if a fight begins within the community, it is not these supposed bandits that are trying to uh, soil the name of the government that will suffer. It is you and I that will suffer. So let's appeal to the relevant authorities to do the needful rather than believing what bandits that already have shown themselves as people who want to divide this nation are showing on, uh, online. So I'm just borrowing the words of the security expert to also talk to Nigerians. Uh, maybe you have a word as well to say. I mean, you said it all. You see, we need to be extremely careful in this day of uh, social media. We need to be extremely careful because social media gives you immediacy, uh, which means you can put anything there almost as it is happening. You can even put it live. And um, as long as, you know, there are no facts checks made, you don't have the date, you don't have the location, you don't have all of those kinds of information on whatever is published. Most times it is very difficult to ascertain or to verify you know, what has been published. And so we need to be extremely careful. It's not just about what, what we find, but there are also people who don't even check the information they are sharing. People just see something and they just forward it. And this, this cuts across ages. I've seen people who are in their 60s, who are in their 50s doing the same thing. You don't forward everything. It's not everything you get that you must forward. There are people who bombard other people with so much information just forwarding and forwarding without even knowing whether what you're forwarding is true or false. And then you generate unnecessary discussion. In some cases, you generate unnecessary tension, you know. And that's why when we were discussing the Unibem case, I said what the soldiers were alleged to have done. Because unless all these things are verified and confirmed, it is usually difficult to speak authoritatively on them. So we have to be extremely careful. Mm. Okay, well, I'd like to just inform our viewers right now that the second half of this program, we will be talking with a, a legal practitioner, Kenna Agbasu, and we, our concern will be what INEC predicted about fuel scarcity uh, maybe affecting the, uh, that it might affect the elections on the 25th of February and maybe beyond and all that. But right now we're just looking at some topical issues that are, uh, worrisome in our society right now. People, like we have said uh, throughout the show, we've talked about, or uh, people have called in to say there are now three queues. There's a queue for the fuel, there's a queue for new Naira nodes, in fact, for money, not just new Naira nodes, and then there's also a queue for PVC. Everybody needs to queue for all these ones because uh, one of at least two of them will affect you. Whether you have a car or not, the fuel scarcity will affect you. Whether you have an account in the bank or not, the uh, new Naira notes or the money will affect you. The unavailability of the money will affect you and also everything else that we are queuing for. But we have to take the right decisions. We'll have to be patient a little bit more and all that. Well, let's just... Um, look at another security issue that may not be related to what is happening right now. It's an old issue about the, the former Minister of Petroleum, that Dezani Alison Madioke, that was, there was a request put forward that the UK government should let her come and face the music in Nigeria, and the UK government blatantly said no, whatever reasons that might be. And the, the um, Interpol chief in Nigeria said that for whatever or whoever is supposed to answer to any crime in their country, they made sure they sent those people there. For whoever was supposed to come back to Nigeria, they made sure those people come, came back to Nigeria. But for, for the case of Alison Madueke, they were not able to get this permission this, uh, this from, the, from the UK government. Now, I don't know. You have interaction with the international community. What can make a country not to release someone who is supposed to answer for crimes in her, in her country for that country to go and prosecute. What are some of these issues that we're looking at that we may not know at first sight? 
Um, I think the standard thing, I mean, this, even any student of international relations, you know, uh, would, 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 would probably know that as well. The standard thing is that oftentimes there has to be an extradition agreement between the countries involved. So in this case, like you mentioned, the Interpol like the example you gave and the, the reasons they gave. So Nigeria and the, and the UK, I know they have an extradition treaty. Uh, and so because otherwise the, the gentleman who was speaking would not have said there have been instances when they have sent people to the UK on the request of the UK, as well as um, vice versa. So why would um, Mrs. Deziani Alison Madreke not be extradited? I wouldn't know. Um, if he had said all the terms of the extradition agreement have been fulfilled, uh, because uh, then, then we will know that it, it actually followed that. Uh, and then we also need to know if it's a bilateral request for extradition, in, other, in, 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 in which case it's a direct request from the Nigerian government to the British government, or it's a request being processed through Interpol, in which case Interpol uh, we'll be working with this, the Nigerian Interpol, we'll be working with the British uh, Interpol counterpart uh, because it's a crime which has been committed in one country and then this person has crossed and, and there's therefore an international arrest warrant, if I'm correct, uh, which has been processed through Interpol. So I don't know exactly the, um, the, the procedure, you know, that this extradition uh, request was made whether it's bilateral, government to government, or whether it's processing an arrest warrant through Interpol. But since it was the Interpol officer uh, who was talking, and not the Nigerian Ministry of Foreign Affairs, I want to assume that this request was processed, but I may be wrong, uh, this request was processed through uh, Interpol. Uh, still, we don't know the, the reasons for which it was not granted have not been disclosed. Uh, and so we, we, we are only left to, you know, debate what was said, or discuss what was said, without actually knowing the details uh, of the request. Okay. My quarrel all has always been that uh, whatever it is, Nigeria should build itself in, to such an, uh, an extent that every time they're talking with another country, they will have a bargaining chip that is very, very glaring. Anyway, we are moving on to other issues. Well, um, the, pro the, the second part of our program, we're going to be dealing with uh, uh, so many other issues. Uh, there will be a time we'll talk about what comment that the um, minister for... Uh, Minister uh, uh, Geoffrey Onyema, Geoffrey Onyema, yeah, that's, that's the name I was, I was forgetting. He said that... Um, we, we should not complain about the travels of uh, Mr. President, that he should do even more about that. But we'll not discuss that now. What we're going to discuss after the break will be that the extension of the collection of permanent voters' cards, PVCs nationwide, to 5th of February 2023 uh, is finishing in a matter of days. But INEC National Commissioner has said that no timetable of INEC will be scuttled by any, any complaints that uh, people are complaining everything will still go the way it should go. The extension of PVC collection ends on Sunday, 5th of February 2023, and there are still complaints on the process of the collection, with many Nigerians calling on INEC to allow Nigerians with temporary voters' cards to exercise their rights. However, the Independent National Electoral Commission, like I said, have said that they are not contemplating shifting or adjustment of timetable for the forthcoming polls. The electoral body insisted that on no account would it allow anti-democratic forces, that's how they called it, and fifth columnists confused the Nigerian people on the plans and intention of the commission. The clarification became imperative following a report uh, by a national daily that the electoral body was contemplating postponing, postponing the uh, presidential election by two weeks due to recent attacks suffered by the commission, especially in the southeast. Now, there is a report on the PVC collection process and challenges faced by Nigerians in Lagos and other parts of the country. But after that report, when we return, we'll meet our guests. Stay with us.